This is Monstera at Ansonii, and it's a favourite indoor plant. It's actually a twining plant, and it's quite vigorous. You'll see here that these stems are getting really long. And this has only taken about a year and a half. You'll also notice that the leaves have these wonderful little holes in them, and they're called fenestrations. The leaves are also papery thin, not like its big brother, Monstera deliciosa. This is a different plant altogether. And if we follow one of these stems up and around, you'll see that the leaves are getting smaller, there's less of them. And although it seems like a fun idea to grow the plant like this, it doesn't really work for us. We want to see more foliage, more of those fenestrations or holes, and we want to develop a nice bushy habit with that. You'll notice here that there's a little aerial root starting to form. And these plants like to attach themselves to something. So if you want a really good looking plant, you're going to need to use a pole or something for it to attach it to. In this video, firstly, we're going to show you how to attach it to a coir totem pole. And then we'll talk about general care of Monstera at Ansonii. So we've removed the plant to the great outdoors and we're going to repot this plant into a larger pot that we can use a totem pole in, and the Adam Sony eye is going to love climbing this. Let's take a look at the pot. You'll notice that this pot, a ceramic pot, has another pot inside it, and that's a nursery pot. And you can see from this angle here that there's lots of really good drainage holes in that, and that's what we need. If we look at the ceramic pot, one tiny little drainage hole that's not really good enough for potted plant. The other advantage of this is that when you're watering the plant, you can lift the whole thing out, give it a good watering or a good soak, let it drain, put it back in here. It's difficult to water that way in one of these large ceramic pots. One, because they're heavy. Two, because they don't drain that well. Now we've just watered this plant really well, so it's still in the process of draining. But as you can see, this plant's got a really good root system. The roots are coming out the bottom of the plant and it's definitely due for a larger size pot. We're using a commercial potting mix. It's a good quality potting mix. It has some slow release fertilizer in it. It has rock minerals, and this will be excellent for the indoor plant. You can make your own potting mix, and we'll put a recipe for that in the notes below the video. When you've got your nursery pot about half filled with potting mix, then it's time to put the coir pole in. Simply dig down on one side, right to the bottom, Place the pole in and then it's time to firm in around your coir pole, pushing down really hard around the pole itself. Once we've done that, we're ready to take our Monstera at Ansonii out of this pot and sit it into here. It's going to sit in front of the pole. Start by squeezing the pot, we'll remove this little climbing frame that came with the plant. See that we've got a reasonably good root system on this plant. So we gently put it in there, and the next thing we need to do is to backfill around it, making sure that we make it nice and tight around the coir pole. So now we need to take these long stems and start to wind them around the pole. This plant has two major stems, and we'll wind them both around, going up and down the pole. So now we have the plant attached to the pole, and if you look carefully at the top of this pole, you can see that you can attach another pole. If you want to, you can drop a stick down inside the first pole, attach another one of these poles and sticks to the top, and then the plant can grow twice as high. But let's move on to general care. In terms of general care, there are three major things that you need to look for. Light. Choose a position where you could read a book in the daytime, in the natural light in the room. That's the sort of light that Monsteria adamsonio likes and it likes about five to six hours of that sort of light a day. It doesn't do well in direct sunlight, so keep it away from windows where you've got sun shining through. Watering. This depends very much on the type of potting mix you use and also on the environment that you're growing it in. As a general rule, test the soil. If it's on the dry side, water it. If it's not on the dry side, don't water it with the potting mix that we're using, we can water this plant once a week. We could even get away with leaving it for two weeks if we had to. 
And there are two ways that you can water the plant. One, you can lift the nursery pot out of the decorative container, put it into a bucket of water, leave it there for 10 minutes, lift it out, let it drain, put it back into the decorative pot. This is a great way to give it a good deep watering. The other method is to water it from above, and when you do that, again, lift it out of the decorative container, put it on the sink, and just water it with a watering can until the water starts to run freely at the bottom of the holes. Let it drain, put it back in the decorative container. Remember, don't overwater because that will cause problems and certainly don't let any water sit in the bottom of that container or in the saucer below it. And as for fertiliser, with an indoor plant, we like to use a slow release type that's designed specifically for pots and planters. Always use it at the recommended rate. And in this case, this is a six month fertiliser, one tablespoon for this size pot, sprinkle it around, and as the soil's moist, we don't need to water this in at all. And that's all this plant's going to need for another six months. As for temperature, you need to remember that Monstera ad Ansonii really is a tropical plant. It's not cold hardy. The ideal temperature range is around about 55 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, 13 to 27 degrees Celsius. It can tolerate lower temperatures, but anything less than 50 Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius, and this plant is going to suffer. So keep it away from air conditioners and cold drafts, and if you're going to grow it outside, you need to live in the appropriate climate. And if possible, try and provide it with a little extra humidity. In terms of pests, there are lots of pests that attack indoor plants and one of the common ones is fungus gnats. They're a little fly and these flies lay their eggs in the surface of the soil. But if we have a look at this container here, you see that it's got a topping of gravel on it and the flies can't successfully lay their eggs into that gravelly type topping. So that's an easy way of helping prevent fungus gnats. It's a good idea to inspect the foliage every week or two just to make sure that there are no pests on there. If there are, identify them and deal with them. If you've got any questions, ask us in the comments and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. So that's it for Monstera at Ansonii. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for regular updates on a whole range of indoor plants and indeed a whole range of gardening topics. And as always, good luck with your gardening.